speaking of people on the opposite side of the globe on the southern hemisphere, Australia's neighbor, New Zealand. <laughs> this is a bad set. That was trying way too hard. Way too hard. Oh, well, we had some really big news come out um, from Rocket Lab. As you guys remember, their 13th flight was unlucky, number 13, even though I guess internally they were calling it flight 12.9999999999 because they didn't want it to be flight 13. Oh. <laughs> and String it didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. Um, so they, they did a, a webcast yesterday that was really cool. And uh, it, they, they did like a full-blown Q&A with Peter Beck, their, their CEO, and, and Morgan Bailey, who's their comms director. And this is after last, oopsies, after last week, they, uh, they ended up telling us what exactly they figured out went wrong with their 13th flight, why it failed. And really, the, the, short, the long answer is, the short answer is a long story, and it's not even that long. There was a connector connecting basically the batteries to the, the engine pump, because don't forget, they don't use turbo pumps, they use electric pumps on their engines to feed the engine, right? And it's a really cool system. Uh, but there's a connector that apparently just experienced a new type of shock because obviously they have to be able to remain connected. And that's the connector's job. But they just found this certain fringe case that cropped up for the first time in this flight that made it so it was just kind of slightly disconnecting and reconnecting and it was ended up soldering and melting the connector and basically frying and disconnecting itself or whatever. Uh, so they found a new failure mode, and in doing so, they actually just re they they figured it out right away. It sounds like you know their data. They just go, oh, clearly this was doing this. They were able to replicate that in the lab, find exactly how it was working, and then mitigate the issue. So it's one of those unknown unknowns. You don't know what's going to fail until it fails. Um, and now they found a new failure mode, made for a safer, better connector. It sounds like um, I, I tried to get in the Q and A. I wanted to get the exact like I wanted to hear how they fixed it exactly. Like what. You know, did you add more this or that or what, you know, what goes into that? But in light of all this, they're already working on returning to flight because it was a nice, easy fix, because that's kind of the beauty of like a digital rocket like this. There's way fewer like there's a lot like a lot of the stuff is just literally wires and software. <laughs> you know, um, if something goes wrong and you have enough data on it, you can just quickly figure it out right away and get back to flight immediately. So they are conducting, um, they're going to do another launch. And it sounds like this launch is, is going to be, I, from my understanding with the press release, they're doing a dedicated launch with no customer payload just to confirm, which is very generous. I feel like that's not necessary, honestly, when you're, you know, have proven that you've already flown to orbit 11 times previously. Um, you know, and yes, I say 11 because their very first launch was not successful. Uh, but uh, 11 times, I think, was their, their previous number of, of successful flights. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'm surprised that they're doing a dedicated launch just to prove their prove to themselves, but good for them, I guess. Um, why not? So you just know. have like a dummy payload on board? I think so. That's my understanding. I, and I should have asked that again, but um, that is my understanding. I'll, I'll try to clarify that. But meanwhile, when they now they kind of talked about the, all this, that's great. You know, back to normal. No big deal. But meanwhile, they all of a sudden let us know that they made some big upgrades to their vehicle. And now, thanks to battery technology, because that's, that's one of the cool things, is that they're riding on the improvement of batteries. You know, batteries is one of the most competitive industries in the world, where mm -hmm. hundreds of companies, if not thousands, are constantly working on making better batteries. So they can just sit back, watch development happen, and then be like, boom, we want that new battery. That new battery is a X amount increase in our in our capacity or, or lighter weight or higher output or whatever. Because of that, you know, the Electron previously, you know, it was probably they were probably working on five year old batteries, which in battery technology is, you know, pretty old. But they now are starting to work with a new battery. And in doing so, they've increased their payload capacity from about 225 kilograms to low Earth orbit to 300 kilograms to low Earth orbit. So that's substantial, huh. about a 30% increase in payload capacity just by changing out batteries and probably something to do too with their, um, their biprop hypercurie upper stage as well, or hypergolic upper stage. So how freaking cool is that? That is crazy, yeah. Yeah, so already making upgrades. We're learning more and more about the hypercurie, which is um, going to be on their photon. They just keep talking about, I mean, all of a sudden they're just going nuts. like. Their team has, let me see if I can find this. Uh, 
<laughs> so yeah, the other thing is they're, they're, they're making an expanded payload fairing. So they're going to have a bigger payload fairing so they can take better advantage of that 300 kilograms. Um, but they also were showing, I mean, they released this new um, user's guide and we just get a better sense. This is the photon interplanetary configuration. So they went from this being the regular photon low Earth orbit. If you're looking at this, sorry, it's just this tiny little kick stage that has some solar panels and it's kind of basically a miniature satellite bus. Nice and easy. Stick your payloads up on top of it. That is now basically your satellite and your maneuvering system all built into one of each other. The customer doesn't need to build avionics and navigation and a thruster. They can literally just put their science on top of it and go to space in a hurry. But then there's a um, th this is the opposite side of it. So you're looking at this is where the customer's payload would attach. But then now we have the photon interplanetary configuration where it's where it's actually using hypergolics, green, green hypergolic fuels. They're calling it green, meaning like not anti, but like not as uh, dangerous to work with and handle. Um, and it has this hypercurie engine, which is another electric pump fed engine. So it's not just prep uh, pressure fed. It is electric pump fed, which is super cool because what that means. And he's saying they're finding out like he realizes uh, he talked about this a little bit yesterday in the live stream. He's like, you know, we realize that this is probably one of the best uses for electric pumps because we can have some battery capacity. We don't have to lug around all of the batteries for a burn. We can lug around just some of the batteries, recharge them on solar. Because, you know, some of your burns, like going to the moon, will take eight burns. So then they can have like weeks or a oh. week to recharge or days, I guess, you know, a day to recharge the batteries, do your next burn and only carry the amount of battery necessary for those burns and therefore reduce your 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 payload mass or your 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 dry mass. And it's like, holy cow, you kind of have like this rechargeable, <laughs> you know, rocket motor. Yeah. Which is really cool. So he's saying like that the Hypercurie <clears throat> will end up, you know, basically be a platform and a, a new bed that they that they could sell to other customers. This could be flown on a, you know, Falcon 9 for interplanetary missions. Like it opens up a lot of cool possibilities. Really so that cool interplanetary stage that you just showed, that's uh, they're, they're looking at sending small sats out to like Mars and. Um, for the sure, the they have system? a payload going to the moon relatively soon. Like, I think it might be one of their first missions on the Hypercurie will be um, will be going to the moon for NASA for part of the, the Capstone uh -huh. uh, program. And then uh, e uh, Peter Beck really wants to take something to Venus. He's like obsessed with Venus. And cool. I think I want to do a crowdfunding thing, you know, and help try to see if we can send a private payload to the to Venus, not to the surface, but. He talked about there's these areas in the atmosphere where there's theoretically. I want a cloud city on Venus. Yes. I think that's I think that's actually a really interesting idea. Yes, and he I, thinks that you know there's the, there's theoretical papers that we could potentially even observe life in those conditions, in mm -hmm. those in the atmosphere even. So mm -hmm. I would love to send a dedicated search for life and slash get photos of Venus, you know, in the that crazy part of the atmosphere and yeah. How wild would but that those be? would launch on an electron or a Falcon 9? Those can launch Falcon on an electron. Oh, on that? an electron. Wow. On a, the little tiny electron rocket can send the Hypercurie out to Venus. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. So so to blow your mind, Ben, looking at the face you were making anyway, yeah. the, the cool Cloud thing City. about Venus. Yeah. <laughs> so so the, the pressure, the air pressure on Venus is so strong that like at the surface, it would be like us being about a thousand miles below the surface of the, the ocean. Yeah, just instantly um, crush that's, it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that means that in the upper atmosphere of Venus, um, the temperatures and the air pressure is closer to what we have. And so, so any kind of even semi-buoyant vehicle could just float on the top of Venus's atmosphere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, a rocket already is, yeah. you know, lightweight and already has like pressure tanks that can be, you know, like make it buoyant. And you can basically just park it, <laughs> set it down on the atmosphere and wow. float it around like a boat. Yeah. Lando Calrissian. <laughs> Exactly. And if not, you know, you could do some kind of inflatable thing that, that does for sure make it buoyant that at the right would area. Be cool. Not sure yeah. Venus is the place I'd, I'd ever really want to be, but, you know, I, I think it'd be cool to see these things. I mean, we definitely don't want more... to fall off of it. But, <laughs> yeah. you know. We definitely need more. But you wouldn't want to fall there. off of it in the ocean either. So it's the same thing. That's true. But, by the way, Tim, uh, my son, um, I told him that you weren't going to Mars and he was very upset about that. Uh, <laughs> but he did ask if you would go to Saturn and get one of the ice crystals from the rings Ooh, and bring I that would, back. 
when I would uh, try since, to do since that. You're not going him. to Mars. We assume you're going to Saturn. Of course, that's the next. Saturn's assumption. closer, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, easier to get to. Way you know. easier. Super easy stuff. It only takes you know nine years to get there or something. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no problem. Yep. But so I thought that was really cool. So again, to reiterate on Rocket Lab, they they had uh they basically after their launch failure, they they came back with a better connection connection. Oh, I didn't even mention they're working on a, a drop test. So it's still Flight Seventeen. Their goal is to not try to swoop it up with a helicopter, but it is to just recover it in the ocean. And mm-hmm. because of that, the parachute they'll be using isn't going to be a parafoil, like not one of those steerable parachutes. It's just a ring parachute, a regular parachute. The, they practice dropping that. They're they're very confident that they can hopefully try to recover a stage. And then from then on, at, after mission 17, take a look at how that turned out, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then assuming things went well, um, then they can just, you know, go forward from there and work on eventual recoverability, like actually properly recovering it before it splashes down and see how things go. And hopefully nice. we fly. Cool. He said, he said, even for us, if we can reuse it once, you know, because someone asked about the refurbishment, like he's like, we don't know yet, but if we can reuse it once and it's worth our time, that's what matters more than money. If it turns out that we can reuse them multiple times and actually bring the cost down, then we'll pass that savings on to our customer so that we can, you know, make, you know, fly more and, and get, be more competitive. Like, of course. So. Yeah. Yeah, I need to go watch that video. I saw it pop up, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. It's fun. I mean, just even listening, just Peter Beck is, I feel like the whole team, I, I've said this a few times, I think, publicly, that I just feel like they're so chill. Everyone's just <laughs> so, like, they're they're just excited. They go with the flow. They make just, like, plucky decisions, I feel like. And they, I don't know, they're just, their their company culture is just so, like, Hey, let's do some cool stuff and like let's just be friends about it. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, they're they're awesome. I would they're one of the few companies that all, almost could get me to to not work for myself. Like I would mm. they they're tempting. I really like them. Yeah. And you get to live in New Zealand. Which jeez, can you imagine? Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.